the number of 3 by 3 matrices A whose entries are either 0 or 1, and for which the system A times the vector, or we can kind of call it the, the 3 by 1 matrix x, y, z is equal to 1, 0, 0, has exactly two distinct solutions is. So let's think about this a little bit. Let me define, let me, just so we make sure we understand what this is saying, let me define my vector A, or sorry, my matrix A, it's a 3 by 3 matrix, as A, B, C, D, E, F. G, H, I, just all lowercase letters. These are the actual entries in the matrix. And if that's the case, then this equation would be this thing, this is A, times times x, y, z, times x, y, z, being equal to, being equal to 1, 0, 0. And if we were to multiply out this expression over here, or if we were to uh, uh, multiply out this equation, we would get a times x plus b times y plus c times z is equal to 1. And we can do that for each of these rows. This, this row vector dotted with this column vector is going to be equal to 0. This row vector dotted with this column vector is going to be equal to 0. And if that's very unfamiliar to you, you might want to watch the linear algebra playlist. We go into a lot of detail on multiplying matrices and vectors and solving equations of this, this variety. But this. If we were to multiply it out, we would get, so if we multiplied this part out, we would get ax plus, so a times x plus b times y plus b times y plus c times z is equal to, is equal to 1. We would get d times x, d times x plus e times y, e times y plus f times z is equal to 0. And we would get g times, so this right over here, we would get g times x plus h times y plus h times y plus i times z is going to be equal to 0. Now, this is, a, this is the, the exact same equation as this right here. I've just expressed it as three equations with three unknowns. Or another way to think about it is any solution any solution to these three equations would essentially represent a point in three dimensions that is common to these three planes. Each of these equations represent a plane. And here we just have to think about it. What are, what are all of the possible solutions we could have? Now, there is a situation where there is a solution, where these planes intersect in exactly one point. So you could have the blue plane. The blue plane might go like this. The blue plane might look like this. The orange plane maybe intersects like this. Let me do that in orange. The orange plane might come out like this. So it'll intersect like that. It'll go below it like that. And then maybe the green plane, maybe the green plane intersects like this. It doesn't have to be, they don't have to go at right angles like this. But this is easier for me to draw. So then the green plane intersects like that. And they would all intersect at that point, And that point would represent the solution. So this is one possibility where you have one solution. So this is what the one solution. This would mean having, this would mean having one solution. Now, there's the other situation in which there's no solutions. There's a possibility that there's no solutions, where they don't intersect in one point. And a pretty straightforward way to imagine that is kind of a triangle. So maybe this is. So let me draw it like this. This is the blue plane. This is the blue plane like this. And then the orange plane, the orange plane might come in like, let me draw it as best as I can, might come out like this, come out like that, then go down, go under like that. And then the green plane, the green plane might cut across like this. The green, try my best to draw it. The green plane might look like this where it cuts across. It's kind of a like a teepee or a pyramid or where the green plane intersects like that. So these three planes do not intersect in any one point. They each intersect with one other plane in an, or they each intersect in the other with the other two planes in an infinite number of points, but there's not one point in three dimensions that satisfies all three planes. This this point right here, it satisfies the green and the blue plane, not the orange plane. Or the green and the blue equations, not the orange equation. 
the, this point right here satisfies the blue and the orange equation, not the green equation. This point over here satisfies the green and orange equations, but not the blue equation. So this right here, this is the case of no solutions. No solutions. And then the final circumstance that you could have is an infinite number of solutions. And that especially, so you can imagine, these actually, well, it, they can't all three be the same equation, because this one has a 1 here, but this one has zeros here. But these two, these two could be the same equation. They could represent, they could represent 1. They could represent the same exact plane. They could represent the same exact plane. So let's say they both represent this magenta plane over here, and then you have this blue, you have this blue thing over here, the blue plane, the blue plane maybe coming out like this, the blue plane coming out like this, like that. They're kind of forming this x, and so you can imagine in this situation you have an infinite number of solutions. You have an infinite number. Any point here, any point at the intersection of these two planes would be a solution. So you would have an infinite, infinite number. Infinite, infin infinite solutions, and that would even be the case. That would even be the case if this was, if these were, if these were all zeros. If d, e, f, and g, h, and i were all zeros, then any x, y, and z would satisfy them. So it would really kind of reduce to uh, kind of being all of R three, and so anything that satisfies the top equation would satisfy all three, because if you put these there, it would all be zero. So as you see. And maybe you already realized this before that if you have the if you have three planes intersecting, you can either have one solution, no solutions, or an infinitely many solutions. Another way to have no solutions is if two of these planes are parallel, or maybe this is maybe these coefficients are zero, zero, and zero. Zero x plus zero y plus zero z is equal to one. Well, no x, y, and z is going to satisfy that. So that would be another no solutions case. But no matter what you do, you're either going to have one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. Now, this question is asking us is asking us. Find the number of matrices A, the number of 3 by 3 matrices A, whose entries are either 0 or 1, so sure, all these coefficients are either 0 or 1, that has exactly two distinct solutions. Well, I just showed you. You either have one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. You cannot have exactly two distinct solutions. So the number of 3 by 3 matrices that has exactly two solutions to this equation is a big 0.